which you're about to witness is the fastest, most unbelievable Minecraft speedrun ever. But before I show it, you the viewer need to do something. Forget everything you thought you knew about Minecraft, because you know nothing. Now that your mind is blank, I'd like to put this run into perspective. Here's a fresh world that I'm gonna speedrun, and the run I'm about to talk about has already been completed at least three times over. But how? You may be aware that the Minecraft code has been torn to shreds in order to find the fastest ways to beat the game, but one particular set of those shreds are so powerful, they might just rip apart the fabric of time itself. Allow me to introduce you to the any% percent time travel set seed category, better described as the what the hell am I watching Minecraft speedrun. It all started in the menu of Minecraft 1.18, where a big brain speedrunner named Sir Palmtree was about to break the laws of physics for the betterment of humanity. To start, he got a buried treasure nearby spawn, collected some wood, grabbed the ruined portal chest, then set sail. After quite a short journey, he chose a spot to dig down, and what do you know, it's the stronghold. What you may not have known is that strongholds in Minecraft 1.18 can basically spawn right under you. However, for the purpose of this speedrun, it just needed to be close enough for time travel to work. But what exactly is time travel. Well, first, you need a time machine, which is crafted with this recipe. I'm kidding, it's basically a method of abusing the in-game timer so it never updates, even though progress is being made in the speedrun. In Minecraft speedruns, you'll usually see two timers at the top of the screen. The one that's constantly going is the total time elapsed since the beginning of the run. The other timer, however, known as the in-game timer, is what the leaderboards use to time runs, and it only updates when a save state is activated, which, by the way, is just a fancy word for saving progress. Now, there are a few ways that a save state can be activated, for starters, pausing the game. But Minecraft also has this somewhat hidden feature where every 5 minutes of in-game time, it'll automatically save your progress. That being said, in order to beat Minecraft impossibly fast, a save state cannot happen, at least not until the runner wants it to. So with no pausing and no spending more than 5 minutes in the world at a time, what possible way could there be to beat Minecraft? Well, it's the obvious answer, and by that I mean crashing the game with Task Manager every few minutes, which takes me back to Sir Palmtree in the Stronghold, where for whatever reason, he's building this bizarre contraption around the end portal. For this next part, there is absolutely no need to break down what's happening because it's all totally obvious to the average viewer, right? Okay, fine. He put all of his items in the chest so they wouldn't disappear after crashing the game, and the Ender Pearl he threw didn't land because it was right outside of his render distance, which by the way, was set to 2, the very minimum. If he wanted to make it land, he could simply turn up his render distance until it loaded, and this strategy is appropriately called a pearl hang. Another weird thing about Minecraft is that if you crash the game with everything you're trying to save in unloaded chunks, they will be saved without the activation of a save state. The additional step of burning to death was done simply because it makes the strategy more consistent. But this all begs one more question. Why was he doing all of this by the portal room? You'll soon see, but first, back to Sir Palmtree crashing his game. I feel like this next part should come with a bit of a disclaimer. Don't ever do what you're about to see unless you're running this category, got it? Alright, so basically after loading into a world where he was strictly on two render distance, he immediately paused, creating the first save state of the run, and turned his render distance up to 25. Um... The next 3 minutes of the run were strictly spent waiting for lag to sort itself out. But there was also another extremely intuitive strategy being used at the same time, known as statistics strats. I have no clue why this is a thing, or if it was even intended to be a thing. But by going into the statistics menu and exiting out, the game, and more importantly, the in-game timer, is sometimes moved forward one whole tick, which equates to 1 20th of a second. Sir Palmtree basically did this until the very tick when the ender pearl he threw earlier finally loaded, then created another save state in order to always spawn right above the end portal when loading into the world. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, it was time to make some real progress in the run. He started by grabbing his items, building another portal, then entering the nether, and after collecting wood, he placed down another chest where he put everything but the planks. With those blocks, he bridged over a lava lake, said a prayer, then committed time travel. When he loaded back into the world, he utilized, forgetting there was a hole strats, then time traveled again. The next time, however, he used spacebar strats, entered the nether, then dug out in a direction until he reached the nether fortress. And I bet you're never gonna guess what happened next. Now that he had a quick path, he brought a sword to the fortress, killed a blaze, put the rod in the chest, yada yada, you know the drill. The following nether entrance was focused strictly on getting ender pearls, which took five, sorry, six sacrifices. But now that he had two pearls and one rod, he was ready to break the laws of physics yet again. 
You see, the average speedrun would feature slaughtering blazes for at least 6 rods and trading piglins for enough enderpearls to make eyes of ender, but Sir Palmtree is far from the average speedrunner. In other words, he was about to dupe into existence every single item he needed in order to finish the run, but maybe not in a way you would expect. Basically, he put every item he wanted more of in his inventory, dropped them over the place he was going to spawn after loading into the world, then time traveled in the most efficient of ways. Upon re-entry, he immediately paused, creating a new save state that sent his in-game timer forward one tenth of a second, then quit the game right once the items loaded. Now, instead of just spawning over the end portal, his spawn also gave him every single item he dropped, which he could just put in a chest, unload its chunks, time travel, and dupe until finished. One absolutely vital step, however, was building a house in the nether, and trust me, this is a house, you can't tell him otherwise. Anyways, after doing that five times, he had the necessary items to finish the run, but the grand finale was gonna be far from straightforward. Due to his spawn being, you know, right over the end portal, once he filled it in, there was no going back. If he was not able to kill the dragon and time travel within five minutes, the in-game timer would update, the run would be dead, and tears would be shed. Or he could just time travel and attempt it again, but fortunately for Sir Palmtree, he didn't need to, since the dragon didn't take long to perch, and he was able to deal enough damage with beds to finish it off with his sword. Let's just take a second to judge him for that one cycle, but anyways, now it was time for the really sketchy part. With the blocks in his inventory, he bridged out to X240, built a wall, and hung a pearl on that wall. During his trek back to the island, some endermen caused him to fall, but that didn't really matter. What mattered was him pulling off the final piece of the run with precision. You see, he needed to hang a pearl over the end fountain, but it's not quite that simple. In the end dimension, there's a 16 chunk area around the fountain that can never be unloaded, making a pearl hang within this zone impossible. But if he, say, threw a pearl and was outside of that radius before it landed, it would work. The one slight caveat was that he had one chance. There was absolutely no room for mistakes, which is why he traveled to just the right coordinates where he could to turn his render distance up by one and the other pearl would unhang. After aiming his crosshair with precision, it was time for the moment of truth. That was the smoking gun that absolutely secured the run. All he had to do was time travel one more time and wait. But there's one thing I purposely didn't tell you. The official, final strategy he was gonna use. That's right, the any% percent time travel set seed category lives and dies by statistics strats. Upon loading back into the world, he immediately paused the game, waited for chunks to load, turned his render distance up, then pressed the button not once, not twice, but 136 times until his pearl finally unhung, and he was through the end portal. The final in-game time was 1.15 seconds, which was later retimed to exactly 1 second. Sir Palmtree technically beat Minecraft in 1 second, but what would the run look like if I simply showed the parts that were being timed? Well, this is gonna take a while to edit considering I have to capture every single tick he advanced with the statistics button, but nonetheless, here you go. If you want to see the strategy progression for this category, definitely watch my other video about it. But anyways, subscribe.